positive peer pressure was put on me to enter the pioneer ministry right out of high school. I have no regrets. And this is always true, and this is always true of young ones. They have no regrets. That's not true. I used to be a Jehovah Witness, a young one. I used to give to Watchtower, and I regret that. If you're a Jehovah Witness watching this, good for you. If you believe that it's the true religion and stuff like that. But you have to agree with me one thing. When Stephen Letts say that no one regrets being a pioneer in all in this, he's lying. Because we all know that there are millions of people that left the Jehovah Witness organization. Maybe you think they were wrong doing that. Maybe you think it's a moral weakness that they are doing that. But I know that I did it and I regret the time I gave to the Watchtower Corporation, aka Jehovah. But I remember when I was a Jehovah Witness, and I loved being a Jehovah Witness, I was working really hard and I was trusted Jehovah would help me. But when my wife got sick, no one helped me. I had to buy the crappiest farm I can afford, and now I have to remove all the shit by hand. If I would have spent, I've been doing this for two weeks now, and some worldly people have helped me, but if I would have spent a decade bettering myself instead of pioneering, I could have a better bar and I could have a better education. What Watchtower always do, if something's good, they take credit for it. If something's bad, they blame worldly people or Satan. Look at this video here. My family were a massive help from Jehovah because my dad was the one who first encouraged me to pioneer. When I did start pioneering, he promised that I would have the full support of my family. So this young girl, this sounds like she's from South Africa, she said she get help from Jehovah. No, she didn't get help from Jehovah. She got help from her family. But Jeho uh, Watchtower will always take credit and say they got help from Jehovah. If her family didn't help her, in this case, it was her father that were paying for her hobby. If her father wouldn't do that and someone in the congregation would help her, then they would have said that she got help through Jehovah's organization. And if she didn't get any help at all and she was starving, they would say that Jehovah helped her endure starvation. And then they would blame Satan for the starvation. They always take credit for what other people do. I remember they would say, Jehovah will bless you. Where's my blessing? All I have is a barn full of crap. When life gives you crap, you can't make lemonade. <laughs> but look at this story here. When I spoke to um, brothers and sisters who spent their youth in the full-time service, that really helped me because it was really encouraging um, and it really motivated me to want to make my own memories and my own experiences in the full-time service. So this Jehovah kid said it was an encouragement to talk to other Jehovah Witnesses that had spent their youth doing things that benefit Watchtower. But is that really fair? Because she's not allowed to talk to people like me. She's not allowed to talk to people that do regret the time and effort they spent to benefit Watchtower. If you go to a car dealership and they tell you that no one ever regret buying this car, everyone is happy buying this car. It has everlasting mileage. It's a pet panda in the trunk and you will, it will be delivered as soon as you reach the afterlife. You have to pay now, but you get it later but you're not allowed to talk to disgruntled employees, disgruntled customers. They are angry and bitter and resent resentful. You're allowed to talk to a small selection of happy customers. <laughs> that would be a crappy car dealership. And the same when Stephen Lett tells people that no one ever regret buying the Watchtower product, working for Watchtower. And on the other hand, he say they're not allowed to talk to me. Well, that's kind of dishonest, I would say. I regret serving Watchtower. And now I'm going to show you my new Billy. Building my future with Jehovah. This is my new Billy, my new buck on the farm. And he's going to be the father of all the good kids the next summer. So I thought maybe we should call him Jehovah. Then I'm literally building my future with Jehovah. My patrons get to decide his name. So 
<laughs> but I thought Jehovah is a good name. But why would you do this to him? He's done nothing wrong. What? Well, look at his eyes. Such a beautiful goat. Now we could call him something nicer. Less genocidal. What about Adolf? <laughs> nah, he's a little bit shy, so it's always interesting when you introduce new animals in a herd because they have a pecking order and... But this guy, he's been here for one week in quarantine because before we introduced him to my herd, but he has a very, very musky smell. So the girls know he's coming. So uh, it might be an R-rated movie when we release him, but I'm going to post it on my other channel that's called Norwegian Hillbilly. So like and subscribe. Silage, give me silage. With silage we endure. The farmer gives you silage, our victory is sure. The farmer gives us silage, our victory is sure. An encouraging song indeed. Thank you, Stephen. Do you have some encouragement and positive peer pressure for our friend here? before he embarks on a mission to impregnate 30 female goats? Never forget that there are more with you than there are against you. The resurrected, immortal, anointed ones are with you. And most important, Jehovah, including the governing body, is with you.